and welcome back to Talk FCB and welcome back here to the channel guys and coming up in today's video is a bit of news of course following yesterday's slender victory over Viad Lid. We've got news there on the fitness and the condition of Antoine Griezmann and the injury that is going to keep him on the sidelines. Also got the latest and some opinion on Lionel Messi and potentially right now his struggles in front of goal and exactly what might be causing those kind of problems. It's all coming up in today's video. I need your thoughts on this guys. So let's do it. But if we start first of all with some reaction there from the local media to yesterday's very, very slender win, like I say, over Viadlid. Sport coming out there with a big headline, don't give up. They still believe there that we can put the pressure on Real Madrid, who are in action there on Monday evening. MD go with King Arturo, who of course scored the winning goal in yesterday's game. And it was interesting after the game for me that many of the players and Kike Setien too, they were coming out there in those post-match interviews and basically saying it was really Really hot. That was what they basically put the second half performance down to. They said the heat there was really intense, that it stopped the players playing in the way they'd like. And I just think there, that's not really an excuse. It wasn't just hot out there for one side. Of course, we know that we've got aging players. Of course, we know these games are coming in such quick succession. But it is kind of the same for all teams. And we've also seen Barcelona play many, many late kickoffs when it's not as hot as some of the other teams that have to deal with this. And I just think there, you can't really be blaming the heat. I think right now we're unable to sustain the right level that we need for the entire 90 minutes but that's not to do with heat. That's to do here with creating an ageing squad of players. That's on the management. That's on the board at Barcelona. Nothing to do with the weather. And I think it was really illustrated, to be honest, exactly how tired the Barcelona team are right now, given the fact that actually they're not going to be back in training until Tuesday of next week. That means here that on Sunday it's a rest day, and also on Monday they're back-to-back -back rest days for this team, who I think right now are basically at their maximum. They've played a lot of games, as everybody has. Like I say, it is the same for all teams, but this ageing team hasn't really been able to cope with the quantity of matches in that short space of time, and they're clearly tired, and we are clearly Really seeing that out on the field. This break for us for the Champions League, it honestly cannot come quick enough. But indeed today, it does spell one whole year since the signing of Antoine Griezmann. Today, July the 12th, back in 2019, we were now announcing the signing in the middle of the transfer window for 120 million euros. One year down the line, I think things have been turbulent. I think we've seen good signs. We've also seen a few worrying signs from Griezmann in terms of exactly where he fits in. Hopefully now he's found a more prominent role in Barcelona, but we're not going to be seeing it in the team for a little while, because after he was substitute yesterday at half-time, Kike Setien came out after the game, he said, look, we had to take Griezmann off, he came in at half-time, he's complaining there about pain in his leg, we couldn't take any risks, and he asked there to be taken off, so Griezmann there did have a problem in that game against Viadlid, and after further tests this morning, Barcelona officially confirmed that Griezmann had suffered a muscle injury in the quadriceps of his right leg, which is yet more injury woe for Barcelona this season because Griezmann, just like Frank de Jong until a few weeks ago, he was one of the only Barcelona players who hasn't been injured in the current campaign but sadly, that injury free run from Griezmann, it's now come to an end and reports in Barca say that Griezmann is definitely going to miss our next two games, our final two La Liga games, both of which of course come next week against Osasuna and then against Alaves in the final game but of course aside from that, the big question is, is he going to be back for the vital game against Napoli in the Champions League, that is the question. At the beginning of August there, it's less than one month away. Is Griezmann going to be back? Right now, again, the reports say that Barcelona are hopeful. They believe that if his recovery goes on track, he is going to be okay just about for that Napoli game. But ultimately, the way he recovers, the way his body heals over the next few weeks, that's going to be crucial. We need him against Napoli. The man he scored, let's remember, our crucial away goal in that tie. Let's wait and see. But if we do indeed move on to Lionel Messi now, because there have been quite a few questions both in the media and also as well from the fan base surrounding Lionel Messi and right now his form, and not just his form overall, but in particular there in front of goal. In terms of goal scoring, we haven't really seen Messi registering the kind of incredible numbers that we usually would, and this is difficult for me, because I don't want it to seem here as though I'm going to outright criticise Lionel Messi and basically say he's not doing enough, he's not playing well enough, because it's always difficult with Messi, because you're not 
judging him by normal standards. By normal standards, by everyday player standards, he's still playing unbelievably well. But by his own standards, things are difficult right now for Messi because he's played nine games there since football has returned. And it also has to be noted that he's played every single minute of each of those games. That equates there to 810 minutes of action over just a single month of football. And in those nine games, Messi has registered just three goals in that time. And you've also got to say, two of those three have been penalty kicks, which actually means that Messi hasn't scored from open play since the very first game back since the return against Mallorca, which was one month ago. And for Messi, you've got to say, that's not normal. By his exceptionally high standards, it's a low return. Three goals in nine games, two of those come from penalties. It is less than what you'd expect from the usual Lionel Messi. And for that reason, of course, there's going to be questions. The media are saying what's happening right now with Messi. We as fans are saying where exactly can we pinpoint that little bit of form that he may be going through. And I think it is interesting right now to analyse exactly what's causing the problems for Messi. Number one, is it tiredness? That's the first thing there that you cannot avoid. You cannot avoid the fact that that every single player over the age of, say, 30, 31, Messi's 33, remember, they are going to be tired during this period. And we just said, Messi has played every single minute of all the games since we've come back. Seti admitted yesterday that he was thinking about taking him off. He was considering resting Messi in yesterday's game. But we all know as well, does Messi want to come off? Does Messi want to be rested? Because usually, and he has done right throughout his career, I don't think he's ever going to change. He hates it. He hates not being out there on the field. He's a serial winner. He wants to perform. He wants to score every single game because he is that way. And he's somebody who's always wanted to be out there, even when he's been carrying injuries. Messi at times has even played through physical problems. And that's why it's difficult. Because now at the age of 33, his body's not the same. It's not going to be the same and it's not going to recover in the same way that it used to do. And even Messi is going to struggle to come to terms with that because you want to stay at that same level. But it's literally not possible. And with the frequency of the games that we've seen recently, over the past few weeks, I think you cannot deny that tiredness will be playing a part, not just for Messi, but for every single player who are in those latter years. It just must do. And then, of course, you've got another side of that coin. You're talking about Kike Setien. You're talking there about the Kike Setien factor that since he's come to the club, has the impact upon Messi actually been negative? Because more specifically there, does the system in which Kike Setien is trying to bring to Barcelona, does that benefit Lionel Messi? Is he enjoying working under Kike Setien? And is he finding himself in a slightly different role that may be affecting his form on the field? And I've said before, I do believe that Setien is the right coach of Barcelona with the right fundamental ideas, but at the wrong time. Because I feel as though Setien is trying to make this team more balanced. He's trying to basically spread the threat throughout the team and not just only through Messi. Not just everything has to be through Messi, Messi, Messi. All the way through, he wants to try and make the team a lot more balanced. And I think you can see as well, to be fair to him, Messi in terms of assists is outstanding. It's incredible. He has taken up there a bit more of a deeper role in that central position, but he has been creating absolutely absolutely brilliant moments and we have been trying there to compensate for Messi coming inside by putting more options out on that right to give our team more balance which in theory looks like a good idea because you don't want only to depend upon Messi and Messi only when you're going for the biggest games but as we saw under Valverde, Messi is somebody who could basically win you games on his own. Literally on his own at times. If you play every single thing through Messi, game in, game out, more often than not, you will win. You will win and Messi will be able to get those goal returns. And that's the dilemma. That's the dilemma right now for any coach coming into Barcelona. How do you get the best out of the team in terms of balancing it in the right way, but also get the best out of the best player, which is Messi. How do you put those two together without having over-dependence on him, without putting everything through him, without making you predictable? How do you put those two together and find the balance? It is tough. It's not easy. And I think right now, we haven't quite got that balance right. But I think my conclusion on this would basically be there a combination of everything combined. Because I think right now, if you look at the stats alone, 22 goals in La Liga, 20 assists as well to go with that. He's the only player ever, and I mean ever, to record those numbers in a La Liga season. And by normal standards, like I say, that is incredible. That is unbelievable numbers. But as we've said before, Messi is judged by different standards, by astronomical standards that sometimes will go easy 
even beyond numbers, even beyond stats. You want to go out there and watch Messi and take everything in out there on the field. And I think before the break even, before we had this enforced break from football, we did see Messi not feeling good, not playing at his best. I don't think he was good physically and I don't think he was good mentally either. And I think upon the return, he did start in a brighter way. But again, the quickness of the games, the quantity of the games, it has caught up with him. Once again, his age has come into play. And also, let's not forget, big speculation going on behind the scenes there over his contract regarding there his whole future at the club and all of this together right now for me out on the pitch is causing uncertainty in terms of Messi the system in terms of his form in terms of in front of goal having a clear head and I just hope that in this three weeks here after the season ends before the Champions League the squad here need a reset they need a total reset here away from the controversy away from the problems on the field away from the problems off the field and we just need to have a complete and utter shutdown to basically get everybody thinking on the same path ahead of that Champions League. We've got one game. That's the way we need to think of it here. We have one game in August that we have to get right. Take it one at a time. Don't think there about Bayern. Don't think there about Man City. All we have is Napoli and every single player need to get on board, need to reset themselves, get themselves ready, do whatever you need to do. Have that rest and just be ready. For that one game, we have to win, we have to get through that, that's Napoli, and that is a season-defining game. So that right now, guys, is the latest on Barcelona. What's your thoughts there on that Antoine Griezmann injury that we'll be keeping out for a number of weeks? But like I say, really, really hoping he is going to be back for that Napoli game. And what's your thoughts there on Messi? Where would you pinpoint the problem? What can we do to help him right now? What can we do to help the team? Let me know all of those thoughts. It's going to be interesting in the comments down below. And of course, plenty more to come from me. The season ain't done yet. I'll see you soon, guys. But until next time, as always, Vika, Hell Barca. Oh.